As we near the 45th anniversary of Apollo 14's lunar landing mission, the question everyone wants to know is, what exactly did NASA do to make sure that there was no repeat of Apollo 13's near disaster? That's what we're talking about today on Vintage Space. So I'm sure the story of Apollo 13 is pretty familiar to you guys watching, but let's just recap it anyways. 55 hours, 54 minutes, and 53 seconds into Apollo 13's mission, one of the oxygen tanks in the service module exploded. The explosion ripped one of the panels off the spacecraft, and it damaged the fuel tanks, killing the crew's oxygen supply. They are forced to use the lunar module as a lifeboat, something that I talk about in this video right here. And of course, as we know, they managed to make it home safely at the end of the mission. The cylindrical service module had been proven flightworthy along with the gumdrop-shaped command module on Apollo 7's flight in October of 1968, and very few changes had been made to either spacecraft since. But now NASA had to make sure that there was no chance another oxygen tank could explode. So first it had to figure out what exactly happened on Apollo 13's flight. The oxygen tanks in the Apollo service module were mounted in pairs on a shelf, and that shelf could be removed and replaced if any upgrades or service needed to be done on the unit. This is what happened to the shelf on Apollo 13. The oxygen shelf, unit 0632 AAG 3277, if any of you are keeping score, was originally mounted in service module 106, the service module that flew to the moon on Apollo 10. But the shelf was removed for upgrades in October of 1968. When technicians went to lift the shelf out of the service module to make the repairs, one of the bolts keeping it in place hadn't been removed. The shelf caught and then fell back down. The upgrades were made and the oxygen shelf was installed in service module 109, which was then assigned to the flight of Apollo 13. NASA had problems with oxygen tank 2 on that shelf almost from the moment it began testing before Apollo 13's launch. The oxygen tanks contained cryogenic oxygen, that is, very cold liquid oxygen because it was easier to contain more of the gas in a liquid form, just like it was for launch. But to prevent the cryogenic oxygen from stratifying in the tank, there were fans and heaters inside. Stirring the tank meant moving the cryogenic oxygen around to prevent stratification. Part of the pre-launch testing was to pressurize and depressurize the tanks to make sure that they were working perfectly. NASA found that oxygen tank 2 could be pressurized, but it couldn't be depressurized without its heaters on. But they figured it was probably not a big deal because as long as the tank could hold pressure, it would be able to hold enough gas to keep the crew alive on their flight. Well, it turned out that every time NASA depressurized that tank with the heater on, it overheated because the power source was a ground-based power source that had far more volts in it, 65 volts, as opposed to the 25 volt power source that the spacecraft had. The too powerful power source caused the thermostatic valve designed to stop the tank from overheating to fail. The tank's heaters hit temperatures in excess of 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, damaging the insulation and leaving wires susceptible to short circuiting. When command module pilot Jack Swigart flipped the switch to stir the tanks, the wire short-circuited and in the presence of pure pressurized oxygen, it was only a matter of time before it exploded. The disaster on Apollo 13 was chalked up to a mix of human error and flawed design. So to prevent the same thing from happening on Apollo 14, NASA made some changes. First, the fans that were used to stir the tanks were completely removed. A probe inside the tank to gauge how much oxygen was left was changed from aluminum to stainless steel. The heaters inside the tank were also changed. Instead of using two parallel elements, now they used three separate heaters that could be operated individually or connected and used at the same time. The thermal switches intended to prevent the tank from overheating were also removed entirely. Finally, all the wiring was insulated with magnesium oxide and sheathed in stainless steel to prevent any frayed wires from possibly arcing. There were also changes made to the actual organization of components inside the service module. A third cryogenic oxygen tank was added inside the spacecraft, and the wiring between all of the tanks was changed such that if there was a failure of one, it wouldn't automatically damage the others. And as one final emergency measure, extra batteries were placed inside the service module in case all of the fuel cells failed again. So really, there was very little chance of a repeat performance of Apollo 13 on Apollo 14. So I hope that answers the question that a lot of you guys have been asking as I lead up to the live tweet of what NASA did to make sure that the astronauts were not afraid to stir those tanks. So do you guys have any other questions on Apollo 14? Be sure to leave those in the comment section below and any ideas or topics you would like to see covered on future episodes. And just a reminder that we are coming up on the 45th anniversary of Apollo 14, so I will be live tweeting the mission beginning on January 31st at 4.03 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at AST Vintage Space for Vintage Space content every day of the week and also that Apollo 14 live tweet. And with new episodes going up every Friday, subscribe right here so you never miss one.